All right, guys, you're here with MBI, and we have a 2016 GMC Yukon Denali in the shop. And we are today going to install a 360 camera system. Um, so we're going to get a front camera up here somewhere. Both side cameras on both mirrors. All right. We're actually going to come back here and put a camera up top for the bike rack that hangs down here, which is going to be kind of cool. Um, and of course, interface it all into the factory system up here. Where everything comes on automatically. With the turn signals, um, front camera will come on automatically, seven mile per hour um, for front parking. Then you'll be able to pull up the, uh, you know, the bike rack camera at any time as well. So kind of show you this once the screen gets fired up here. <clears throat> we do have the projection icon factory nav as, as usual so Apple CarPlay Android Auto and we're gonna rock and roll and put in this uh, 360 camera system so we'll get started uh, getting some stuff torn apart be back here shortly to show you what we got guys okay, so we're gonna start by taking the door panel off we'll do the left side here and then we're just gonna be the same process on the right hand side but to start we've got a little panel right here hidden it's got to come up I'm gonna have to expose this guy here too there's gonna be a screw and then this guy should just start popping off all the way around um, the edge of the door to get this panel off so we can get to the mirror and start working on it so I will go ahead and start working here I'll be back here shortly to show you what's up all right guys so FYI this is kind of a real pain in the butt um, Behind the door panel here is this little hidden panel which you have to pop off right down here in the corner just FYI right there that'll come out that's gonna expose that seven and then we've got these two guys here that came out um, sevens there there's also two sevens down here you can kind of see the holes those got to come out and then this panel pops off really tightly you just got to kind of just give it a nice strong tug all the way around those clips are in there very strong and then this guy here just kind of sits um, in the channel around the metal there so you can kind of see right there the lip goes around right here to seat into place so this door panel is not fun but that's how it comes off I'll keep going all right guys door panel off you can kind of see the yellow clips that are holding the door panel in right around the edges so that's the hard part pop those out I'm gonna put those back in place and then these guys here are gonna have to come out on both sides there to get this guy here off and then it's much like the Silverado's where we're going to take the clip off right there to get the pull handle to release and then unhook that guy right there so let me go ahead and do that so this guy here looks like a some kind of a release here it's going to let this you have to kind of push down on this guy pull up yeah there you go so all right guys, so on this cable right here, you just gotta kinda press down, kinda push in, and then pull out, so you can release this ball from the handle there. Pop it out, and then unplug this guy right here from the uh, connector. All right guys, so we're gonna work on tearing this center dash apart so we can access um, behind the screen to tie in the module. Um, you'll notice this vehicle does not have the overhead entertainment. If it did, we will be accessing behind the glove box to tie in to the HMI, which we're gonna have to do anyway. So I'm gonna start by, you know, getting some of this stuff apart. I'll kind of come back and show you what I'm doing along the way so we can find a way to mount the module and um, get that hooked up so we can get camera picture on the screen to adjust the side cameras the way we need them to be adjusted. I've got that mirror apart, so I'll come back and show you that here shortly. Um, as to how to mount it, but before I do that I want to be able to get um, camera image on this front screen 
so I can see how to adjust them properly. So I'll be back shortly. All right, guys, so you can start by popping this panel off here, which just with the pry tool, this guy will come off and it's got pop clips all the way around, okay? So that's gonna just set up there for now, but just take your pry tool, get under the edge here and pop out all the way around. We come over here. We're gonna need to get this side dash access panel off, which once again, just get in here with your pry tool and pop out. That's gonna come off. You can see again, just pop clips. And we're gonna expose some T15s, I'm guessing. Here, here, and there's two down here as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove those, get this out of our way. <clears throat> then what we need to do is get this guy out of our way. So we can then pop this guy up and start getting the screen to where we can access it. So let me go on that and I'll come back. All right guys, with those four um, T15s removed, this guy will just snap off, okay? Once again with pop clips. It is pretty tight right down there in that bottom corner. Um, and then you may wanna go ahead and just pop this guy off as well. Get it out of your way. And then once again, we're gonna go ahead and pop this off so we can get the center console off here and then work on getting that screen out. All right, so what you wanna do is start back here and get under this molded lip right here, pop up on both sides, and then give it a tug. This whole entire thing is now loose. And we'll come out of here once again, your famous metal clips holding it in. We need to unplug some connectors on the back side so we can get this out of the way. That's now going to expose a seven here to get this guy out of the way and some sevens here on both sides and around the vents, I imagine, um, to go ahead and pop this screen off so we can get access to the back of that screen. All right, guys, so FYI, the USB plug sits right here and it is not fun to get out. You've got this little nightmare clip here to get out of your way. So that's gotta come out to allow you to depress it. Um, to release it and the depression is is right here and then you just tug this way out um, and then of course this clip here or this plug here um, right here just kind of plugs in so this guy here can kind of get out of your way now after that's said and done we've got some sevens there like I pointed out earlier okay guys here you go seven mil down here in the corner this guy pops out very tightly with a couple clips on the back side. All right. Then take your pry tool. This guy, once again, also clips all the way around to hold it on. This whole assembly right here snaps off. We're going to unplug those connectors, get this out of our way. Then I've got one here and here on both sides. Get these vents out of my way and then this screen just comes out it's gonna allow us access to the back side to plug in all right guys so i will note up here in the right hand corners there are there's a screw on both sides that you need to remove to allow these guys to now slide out it's going to allow us access to one two three four on both sides this whole screen assembly now comes out all right guys, so to start, if you get the glove box down, you'll see a little uh, release mechanism there. We're gonna release that so this box will fold down. We're gonna have to kind of pull in on both sides of the glove box here to get it to drop. And that will expose some torques in behind there. You can kind of see right there. So this panel here pops off and we can then expose the HMI in behind there and plug our module in, so I'll be right back. All right guys, so with the glove box down, one, two, three, four, five, and there's one hidden in the corner right there you gotta get, that's gonna slide down. That now allows access to the HMI, which we're gonna tee into here in a second, and I'll show you those connections. And we're gonna mount our control module right down there in that little pocket. Um, 
right down here is going to be the perfect spot for it. So let me go ahead and get that out of the box, get it mounted, and I'll come back and show you my connections. All right, guys, so on this uh, 16 Yukon Denali, you can see there's not a whole lot of spots to mount the uh, camera just because of the size of the camera and there's no real lip to mount it to without looking stupid. So we've elected to go down here next to the plate and tested it on the bench and it does give a pretty good angle. So we have drilled a small hole right back there. It's a 7 30 seconds bit. That's just going to feed right through. All you're going to do is pull that wire through on the other side. <clears throat> and then underneath there, I'm going to hand the phone over. We've got a little channel with a little fish ran through um, that you're going to tie to. So there's only one real spot to put it which we'll try and point out. I'm not sure how this is going to come out on foam, but we'll go ahead and we're going to pull it through up into the cavity of the uh, engine bay. All right, so on the back side here, you can see that we've already drilled our hole and pulled the wire through. It's this one here. What I'm going to do is come down and there's actually a harness here for the fog lights and other stuff under the bumper here. I'm going to attach it basically to this fog light harness using some zip ties. Let me go ahead and pull my wire through. Okay. So, go ahead and grab a zip tie here. back here and tighten this up at the end once we get all the slack out of the wire. Essentially what we're going to do is follow this loom of wire over here and as you can see I have a fish here that we're going to use to pull the wire up right beside the fuse panel. So let me tape the wire to the end of that. Okay just like that. So this guy's just going to run over, zip tie all the way to there, and then from there we're going to shoot up and zip tie up to the top. I'll come back here after we get it all zip tied and show you the final outcome. Okay, from here once again, get these guys right here, these little clips out of the door with a little uh, popper. Um, we use a guy like this. So once again, Lowe's, Home Depot, or even Harbor Freight is going to be your good friend there. Um, get that th out of the way, unplug this guy here from the connector and we've got four tins to loosen this outside mirror is now going to pop right off so we can run some wires all right guys so a quick little how i got this off so you can see little notches okay we click in here 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 and here so you're in with your pry tool and kind of from the bottom Kind of pop out all right and then those hooks kind of go in on here and here there's not much to them you just kind of slide it over and out, up and out so that comes off of there and then the same thing here this will separate from the main housing and i started at the bottom and kind of you can see the little notches here that click in down here um, same with up here Click in right here and here. Okay, that will pop off. That's gonna let this get out of the way. I was able to go ahead and mount the camera right there, nice and pretty. All right, um, hole for the line to come up through, and then on the bottom of this guy, a little access plug. If you pull that off, what I'm gonna do here is just follow the wire here to here down through the tube All right now I'm just gonna take it right through there and follow it on into the car so that's the whole concept there this is not a lot of fun a little patience and you can get it done all right guys so I want to give you a little heads up when trying to go back together with this guy on the outside of the mirror this is an absolute nightmare so my pain is your gain you need to pay attention to, the, to these two um, notches right here. Have to slide in 
over these outside openings right here. You got to. So you got to kind of angle it in there and get it around those notches so they come through. Show you over here. You can see the notches right here on the outside plastic. This will not go back together without doing that. And then the final outcome with the camera is right there. Okay guys, mirror mounted and the wire is running down the factory harness here and into the boot. Okay, plug back in. Now I am gonna warn you, you're gonna have to actually remove this, just pull this down, this pink guy. And that will allow this connector to come apart from the door. Then you're gonna have to get a fish of some sort. I just went to Home Depot, actually Lowe's, to pick this guy up. It's a three foot white zip tie, which I tied to the end of it, the uh, camera end, and brought it into the vehicle. Okay, right there. So you're gonna have to just tape it to the end nice and neat and work it up through this boot, in through here, in through the kick panel, which is now gonna allow us to extend it over and plug it into the module, which I'll go over here shortly. But this is not fun. This has to come off. Um, just remove this so you can kind of get this out where you can work it. Um, to get the fish through it and pull that wire through All right guys, so you can see I've got the uh, harness there kind of routed up along um, This harness here Okay And then up and Over and what I've done give me a view here So I'm taping this off so it's gonna look nice and factory under here and then we're gonna have a whole lot of slack here to wrap up and tie nice and neat it's gonna come over here and plug into the module right there in the center so I'll come back and show you that but once again through the kick well here just kind of follow the existing harnessing up and over and through here and then tape, tape nice and neat once again Looks factory, nobody's gonna question it. Um, through here and over to the center. All right guys, so a little bit different on this go around on this camera here. So if I'm gonna send you these cameras with the double stick tape, what you're gonna wanna do is heat um, both the surface area of the camera and the back side of this double stick tape before sticking it and then cut a notch out right here so this cable can kind of flex in here without a problem so we're gonna drill a hole right here okay on the outside edge of the mirror and you want it to tuck in there nice and flush without any um, distortion of the tape whatsoever so go ahead and do that all right guys so once again you can see the hole drilled there for the able to go through and I'm gonna heat both the surface area of the mirror cap up also that sticky tape you can kind of see the sticky tape getting bubbly so it'll stick nice um, won't go anywhere basically after that's all said and done so I'll come back here in a second and show you all right guys just a little note here from the last go around um, once you mount the camera which I've got there mounted all nice and neat one second here Okay, tape it around the light on the inside so it avoids both these little locking tabs. And then of course I've got it zip tied to this harness, down through the bottom, and over here, nice and neat, all factory looking. So the side's going much easier now that I know what's going on. Um, again, pay attention to these guys to lock them into place. And should go on pretty smooth for Alright guys, so FYI, right there at the top of the boot is a little nipple you can cut off where I've got a uh, 
fish coming through. Again, that same three foot section zip tie at Lowe's. This is not a one person job, just FYI. You have to have somebody on the other side kind of pushing through while you grab it um, on this side and then pull through, which I'll do right now. He's gonna feed it on the other side. Go. All right guys, super cool install here, but not fun whatsoever. So we've got a nice little camera right here um, for the back um, on the cargo for this 360. But this spoiler's gotta come off. So you have to pop the glass up and under the glass, see if I can do this. Exposes some screws, some tens. Those all gotta come out. Some torques on each corner of the glass. All that's gotta come off, come out for the spoiler to then pop out. Now the spoiler will not come off unless the hatch is in about this position, right about here. So this is really, again, once again, a two-person job uh, to avoid scratching things up. But once you get it in there, mounted, super tight, there's only one real spot for that to go into. We then sneak up in here, drops down right through here, into the vehicle. Now this is something the customer did with the brake light. This has got nothing to do with us. But our harness, you can see it in the back side. It's running over here, along the top, all the way up front, down the A-pillar, and across the well box area. Alright guys, one more little shot here. Again, camera comes through the, uh, the uh, right kick here. Very tight, not fun. This guy here though, um, you can kind of see that back little tower. It's got one, two, three, and then one way up there, seven mils. They gotta go in and it's not gonna be fun to get this back in place, just FYI, but it's gonna kind of go just like that. Um, but you gotta sneak those sevens down. Um, and this back one might be some fun to, to get in there, but Anyway, that's that little bit closer shot of what you're doing there. Of course, we just ran the wire up, tied it to the existing harness over and across. All right, guys, one last thing to point out here. Um, we did go back in and reseal that hole right there with some black silicone. So your local parts store um, fixed that right up. So it's all sealed completely. All right, guys, you can kind of see we've got everything buttoned up nice and neat. Um, down in there, there's a lot of wire um, that's got to be tucked in there. So you've got to wrap everything up nice. Um, it's all going to just kind of go in there nice and snug. Last thing I've got to do here is um, put this centerpiece back on, make sure everything fits, but I think we're fine. So um, as you can see, nice and tight. Um, the module does angle in straight. So the USB cables that tie into the screen are angled down towards the engine well there, the firewall. So you're gonna go in straight and then the USB port itself, which I've got hidden, we're gonna have to access that, is gonna tie into the front of that. So um, pretty tight install, but very clean. We'll give you a final outcome here shortly. All right, guys, we're back on the final outcome here of this uh, 2016 Yukon Denali with MVI. Um, we just finished installing the 360 surround system. The camera's on each mirror, um, outside side mirrors, front camera up front here. Nice and neat, tucked right next to the plate. It's a great view, which we'll show you here in a second. Again, the left side, same thing, camera mounted. And on the back, we chose to put it up here by the third brake light. Customer wants to use it for his bike setup, his bike rack, um, but can be used for other functionality as well. So let me get in and show you the functionality of the system. 
and we'll get going. So also has got the smartphone mirroring set up, which we're playing with right now. So we are actually mirroring the phone right now. There's got a video plan. We do have full mirroring functionality of the iPhone on this system as well, which can be used for ways, navigation, um, any kind of you know smartphone navigation setup or videos, whatever you want to do. Nice clear sound, works pretty good, great picture. So in addition to the 360 cameras, you do get um, the smartphone mirroring, which is a nice little bonus. So we'll go ahead and exit out of here and show you the cameras. So this will get us back to our, our home screen there. Um, it's going to pull up our interface for the uh, camera system itself, which I'll go over here in a second. And from there we've got our obviously our GMC normal splash screen there for Intel Link. So, um, cameras are going to switch automatically right now as far as forward camera goes, side cameras, and then we can pull the rear camera up um, on demand as needed. So let's go ahead and get started here. Show you what, you, what we got. So there's our front camera. We are below seven mile per hour, so that automatically activates. See, it does got a nice clear picture. When we get above, it's going to go away. And then the cameras will turn on automatically. Again, I have to be above a certain mile per hour for the front camera to go away. And you can disable this functionality if you want to. You don't have to use that. We're above seven now. There's my left side. Nice view. Right side nice view we're going to come to a slow front camera is going to come on automatically all right we'll get on down the road here and kind of show you the rest so again front camera on automatic and again left side right side and if I wanted to pull up rear we can do so here's our rear for the bike rack this customer is going to use it for whatever else you want to use it for so good stuff guys um, left camera will over override it's great for big cities driving down the highways and everything else pulling trailers and you can go in and shut off want to the uh, feature front cam by speed so now that won't happen left camera and when I slow to below seven it won't turn on now you can go into the menu and turn it on automatically if you want but um, now when I slow down that will turn on so this is a big install guys on the uh, Yukon's Tahoe's the mirrors are not fun this is a very tight vehicle we do have some pretty good footage here though um, should be able to get you through it if you want to take it on but I will warn you FYI this is a big project you're definitely gonna want a weekend to put this together and get this right you can see them slowed down pretty well now and that camera is not turning on and our factory camera will pop up in reverse like it should without any issue just like so and of course we can go in and turn these guys on on demand as needed as well so there you have it guys 360 camera install on the uh, this is a 2016 Yukon Denali this will work for the Chevy Tahoe Suburbans as well also the uh, Cadillac Escalade um, for more information as usual give us a call at the number at the end of the video